Good afternoon, everyone. I left India in 1974 with a one-way ticket to US and $11 in my pocket. The plane stopped in Paris. I was starving. Went to a cafe, and the only word I recognized there was omelet, which I ended up buying, and gave all of my money to the cashier. And she gave me $8 back. And that's the money that I came to US with. And as I sat in the airplane, I said to myself, boy, am I screwed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was the beginning of a long journey. And it started at Drexel University in Philadelphia. I had just arrived in West Philly to go to graduate school. In this journey, I learned a lot of lessons. That was 37 years ago. And I thought I would share with you three of my major learnings uh, today with you. And I'm really honored to share those with you. So let's set the stage. Again, it's 1974, West Philadelphia. I am 21 year old, and this is me. You can laugh. <laughs> but is that really me? <laughs> and actually, there is one more slide which shows me in the lab. And here I was, a 21-year-old kid thrown halfway across the world, had never been outside the home. I was going to live on my own, go to school on my own, and absolutely in a different culture. Talk about a culture shock. And not to mention that this was West Philadelphia. While the city of Philadelphia is called city of brotherly love, West Philadelphia is a little bit of a, you know what, right? <laughs> and I don't think they had ever seen a Sikh, a guy with a turban and a beard, and, you know, walking around the streets of Philadelphia and going to school, it was a rough time in my life. The interactions with the students were awkward at best. They really had no idea what to make of me. And as I walked down the streets of Philadelphia, I wondered what assumptions people made about me, who I was, what I stood for. But one thing was very clear. Nobody really thought I was a technologist, that I did technical stuff. And some of the students would even tell me, you look funny, you talk funny, what are you doing here? And it was very hard for me to conceive of how I would fit into the American society. How would I contribute? How would I create value here in this country? But there was a desire to succeed. There was a desire to prove everybody wrong that I could really do it. And I started asking myself a question, what is my potential? How do I achieve that potential? What opportunities would come my way? And I had read about an analogy that I'd like to share with you, and that's about a seed. If you have a seed, some people look at it and they see the seed. Others look at the same seed and knowing the nature of the seed that if it is given the right environment, it can grow up to be a tree and create its own ecosystem where, plant, where animals and insects can come and live. People can rest, it gives fruit. It does a whole lot of things. And in fact, that tree generates hundreds and thousands of more seeds. That seed is a forest. I'm sure you think of your potential as well. And I encourage you to think about your potential because I truly believe that the journey to achieve your potential, to realize your potential, is a fantastic journey. 
It gives you a great deal of satisfaction even when you are on that journey, let alone when you get there. It gives you a great deal of sense of accomplishment and joy. So I want to share with you three lessons that I have learned from my journey. One of my first learnings was get to know yourself. As I was thrown into this new culture, my world was turned upside down. Every assumption, everything I knew about myself, I was not so sure about. And I had to ask myself, who am I? What do I stand for? Where am I going? So the question arises, how do you get to know yourself? I really feel that it is by your values. There are a lot of things. Given the time constraint, I'm going to focus on only one thing, which is the values. What are your values? And for young people, a lot of times we don't think about this stuff. We get so busy, like I was, in technical stuff. Let's just get education. Let's just get the degree. But it's really about your values, because the values guide you to do the right things, and it gives you the clarity of thought and consistency in the way you operate. I believe it increases your quality of life. In my case, my faith, Sikhi, helped me define my values. In our faith, the guru prophets define God or divine not by a person, not by an image, by, but by a set of virtues and values. And here are eight of them. This is the beginning of the scripture for the Sikhs. Eight words defining what God is like. So on the right hand side is the Gurmukhi scripture, transcription, and then the way I interpret the eight values. Be integrative. What does that mean? Well, what that means to me is oftentimes we are thinking about one thing. Maybe we are thinking about a lot of things, actually. We are saying another, and we are doing totally different. We are not connected up here in what we think, what we say, and what we do. Get integrated. I think this is where meditation and yoga and those things come in handy. Live with integrity doing the right thing when nobody is looking. How important is that? Creativity, be creative. Live with courage, I tell you. I have four boys, we walk around with turban in these days post 9-11, that's living with courage. <laughs> <laughs> Nirvair, express love for all, be consistent. Ajuni Sabhang, recognize power within the self. The power within the self is the seed and the forest. Within you is tremendous power. And you need to bring that out. And Gur Prasad, be thankful and express gratitude. You know, I, I practiced these values as much as, as I could in my younger days. But in 1993, I hired a retired military officer in my company. And I saw him practice values and talk about values like I had never seen before. He gave me tremendous encouragement by the way he behaved. And you know, we started talking about this in our business a whole lot more than I had ever done because I always thought, well, we do technical stuff and we're not supposed to talk about this stuff. Well, by knowing ourselves, we can operate with pure intentions and a genuineness, and it creates better and healthier relationships. The life lesson number two. The second lesson that I learned was that people who have big dreams and a vision for their life and a plan to execute, end up in a better place. When I was 24 years old, I did something that I didn't see most 24 years old do. 
which is plan for life at age 55. I would literally sit down and think very seriously about what does life look like at age 55? What would give me pleasure? What would give me pain? Very simple questions. And then what am I really going to do to minimize the things that will reduce my pain at age 55? By the way, at age 24, 55 seemed like eternity. <laughs> but to visualize, what does your family life look like? We all think about our professional life all the time, but sometimes we don't pay attention to the family life because I really believe that's the tree and that's the forest. Your children are the tree in the forest that you create and the ecosystem that you create around you. So every action that I took after I graduated was in trying to achieve that vision. But vision changes, vision evolves. And beginning in 1983, my vision started to change and I started feeling that uh, to realize my full potential, I gotta go on my own. I gotta start my own company. I gotta figure out what am I really made of. So it was not that I wanted to make a lot of money. I really had no concept on how to start a business and do a lot of things. But I wanted to realize my own potential. And I wanted to hire people who could come and work in my company and they could realize their own potential. And that's what it was all about. I had $8,000 saved up and one third of that money went into buying a compact computer. I think I have a picture of that computer right there. <laughs> a 286 computer. But I carry this thing through Atlanta Airport. <laughs> anyway, I spent one third of my money uh, buying this computer. It came in two, hard drives came in two sizes, 10 megabytes and 20 megabytes. And I, you know, and I said, man, I'm going to go the whole nine yards. We'll buy 20 megabytes never need memory again. <laughs> and here I was sitting in my bedroom and saying, who's going to give you business? You don't know anybody in San Antonio. You're a PhD guy, you work at Research Institute, you work at university, nobody knows you. Who is going to give you business and why? You know, sometimes logic doesn't work and emotions get you. I started the business anyway. Getting in the door was very difficult, I have to tell you. But once I got in the door, I was there for good. And one of the things I did was if I got a project and they expected this, I was going to deliver here. And that technical excellence and technical uh, work that I did was combined with what I talked about. The inspiration that I got from my faith about doing things honestly and you know being thankful and all of those things that I talked to you about earlier. The first customer that I got gave me more business every single year for 10 years in a row. It's like you going to a restaurant and you go once a week and you go, you increase the frequency and then go for 10 years and you spend more money every year, right? Uh, the customer gave us more money for 10 years in a row, and until I sold my business 21 years later, they were still our customer. That's about relationship. Well, you know, the vision really helps you establish a destination. I'm trying to get here. The values, as far as I'm concerned, are the rules of the road. Right? Can't speed and all of those things. And then small goals are intermediate points in trying to achieve uh, your vision and the dream. The third lesson that I learned is life is all about service. I used to think I'm a techie. And by the time I turned 40, 45, I began to believe life is all about service. You know, we had four little kids at the time, 
So in family, you're a husband and a father, you go to work, you're a technologist and a CEO, you go in the community and you are trying to do the best to serve the community. You got, I felt I had too many balls that I was trying to juggle. And it was very complicated. And I saw a quote by a Nobel laureate, Tagore, and the quote said, and there's a slide on this, I slept and dreamt that life was joy. I awoke and saw that life was service. I served and behold, service was joy. We took this coat we had at the entrance of our building. It didn't matter whether you were a PhD or you were a general working in our company. It was all about service. Some people did question me and ask me, how could working for a for-profit company be equal to working for a non-profit company? Well, let me tell you the type of projects we were doing, and you tell me if that meets the criteria or not. One of the projects that we did was for Southwest Airlines. Every pilot that flies for Southwest Airlines was trained on a system that we built. It was a flight checklist procedures to reduce errors in cockpit and thus improve flight safety. The second project that I'll mention here is we designed medevac pallets that were um, positioned by the Air Force strategically all over the world that when the uh, soldiers get wounded, they can be brought back to the US on, in airplanes uh, and to places like Brooks Medical Center. So that's the kind of thing that we were doing. So service, vision, and maximizing my own potential and my team's potential were the key ingredients that transformed that 21-year-old with $8 in his pocket to the largest San Antonio-based defense contractor. Let me close by saying that we are all like seeds and we all have the potential to be the forest. It's our job to work on it. And the three, and the three attributes that I shared with you, life lessons that I shared with you, is number one, know yourself, which means have a set of values that guide, guide you through life, develop a vision for your life, set goals that give us baby steps to walk towards the destination, and an attitude and commitment to service, no matter where we, the, we are at work, at home, or in the community. In the busy lives of today, where we are all busy with our Blackberries and iPhones and Droids, I think it's really important to take time to reflect, and maybe do it over an omelet, because it may be a beginning of a wonderful journey. Thank you very much.